June 18th to the 25th is Independent Bookshop Week in the UK. And this is the IBW 2016 tag. I was tagged by Simon Savage over at Savage Reads, so let's get started. Number one, what books are in your bag? Well, actually, I don't carry books in my bag. I don't bring books to work. You won't find me on the weekend with a jaunty hemp bag, a baguette sticking out of it, some cave-aged Gruyere, and a bottle of Voss with Emma Klein's latest coming back from the market. I am a suburban dad. I am a bad day away from watering my lawn and my socks and sandals. And if I want to go outside to read, I step out into the backyard with a glass of whiskey like a civilized human being. So let's consider the question metaphorically and say that as soon as I was tagged by Simon Savage, with, ran off to my local independent bookseller armed with a gift certificate that I got for hosting that storytelling event last week and picked up Rachel Cusk's outline based on the rave reviews coming from the Right Reads podcast. And I also picked up A House in the Sky by Amanda Lindhout and Sarah Corbett, which is this year's One Book, One Community Read. Number two, what was the last great book you read? Well, that would be Girl at War by Sada Novich. I uh, did a video review of it last week. You can check out the quick review that I filmed and see the book that actually was the combo breaker for my slog of So So Reads. Number three, what book have you gifted the most? Well, my folks are the only people I actually gift books to, and of course I've never given them the same book twice. The last book I gave them was Atul Gawande's Being Mortal. A little grim, perhaps, but hear me out. My mom, in typical Asian martyr fashion, was always invoking her own death in my teenage years. She was saying that she was going to inevitably die soon, and then I could date all the white girls I wanted and party, but for now I needed to concentrate on my math homework. Now, as retirees, they're part of a strange demographic and have attended countless funeral luncheons. Funeral homes put on a, a luncheon spread in exchange for hearing them out, and pre-selling them on their own funeral so they don't pass along that financial burden to their kids. My folks have gone to several of these and are only too happy to listen in. But they are much more the cardboard box cremation type bury me in the backyard in the garden. In any case, this invokes some conversations with them that they're only too happy to have and they're very open and frank about it. Number four, what's your favorite independent bookshop? Well, I've had a chance to visit Indie Bookshop Mecca, which is the Strand in New York, two years ago with my daughter when we were in New York. Um, but here in town, it has to be Wordsworth Books. It has been a local institution for nearly 30 years and is the go-to independent bookstore here in town. Number five, what is a favorite book recommended to you by a bookseller or a fellow booktuber? So let me admit that I have been a literary prick, a bookish snob, confident in my own opinion, rigid in the belief that only I was capable of recommending a good book for me. And it's only since coming to BookTube that I've actually opened up my horizons and opened myself up to taking bookish recommendations. One of them was from Liberty Hardy via Twitter, of all things, who said I should check out The Man from Primrose Lane by James Renner. I've not regretted it. It was a fantastic read, so much so that I wrote a gushing fan letter to James Renner himself. Loved that book. Number six, what was your favorite bookshop memory? Uh, Wordsworth book was responsible for putting together the first author event I ever attended. It was Timothy Finley who was touring his book Headhunter at the time. I absolutely loved Not Wanted on the Voyage as well as The War and was excited to see him. And Russell Smith was also there reading from his debut novel How Insensitive. Number seven, what do bookshops mean to you and what do you love about them? Well, I love bookshops because they carry books, which I love to read. But after that, things start falling apart. Turns out I don't actually visit independent bookshops all that often. Turns out I am a non-denominational devotee and worship at the altar of libraries, used bookstores, big chains, ebook, online retailers, and independent bookshops. I'm a pantheistic heathen when it comes to booksellers, and frankly, I'm rubbish in bookstores itself. I don't ask for help. I'm not looking for the recommendation for the next hot read. I am there with my super secret TBR open in my Pinterest app looking for a very specific read. In used bookstores, I'm a little bit more open to serendipity and might be looking for a book that I've already read as an ebook, just so I can own a physical copy. But that's about it. Number eight, what are the books that made you? What books affected or influenced you most? And that would have to be Macbeth. I, like just about everybody else, read Shakespeare in school, but I just did not get it. I did not appreciate how inscrutable the language was and how I had to rely on these footnotes to explain who Queen Mab was and what it meant to bite my thumb at you. It just it seemed uh, pointless, and I didn't get what all the fuss was about. But then our class got the chance to go down to Stratford, Ontario, and see a live production of Macbeth. I've since then seen over a half dozen versions of the play live, 
but that one still sticks in my memory. I distinctly remember Lucy Peacock clawing the floorboards as she was slowly going insane. That still sends chills up and down my spine. It was an amazing production. And I think it sort of informed the idea that there is more to the text than what's there on the page. And there are things outside of it that can influence your reading of it. Now, that's not necessarily a right way to read. Some people like just sticking to what's there on the page. But for me, it was important to know that maybe Michelle Faber's wife was dying while he was writing the book Strange New Things, or that Ruth Ozeki was a Zen Buddhist nun. It influences my reading of the text. And I think I learned and appreciated that first with that production of Macbeth. Number nine, what is your book recommendation for a gift for Father's Day? Well, it's a little late for that now, but I'm of the belief that get them the book that they want, not the book that you think they should want. I mean, if they want nothing more than Jeff Foxworthy's You Might Be a Redneck, don't get them Jesmyn Ward's The Men We Reaped as some sort of object lesson. Books like The Da Vinci Code and Fifty Shades of Grey, regardless of their literary merit, are the books that create readers. Those are the books that you should be gifting to people if that's the ones they want. Don't force your tastes down their throat. And finally, number 10, what book is currently on your TBR pile? I can't wait to get started with Daniel O'Malley's Stiletto. Is the follow-up to his book, The Rook, and I've been waiting for it for years. I loved The Rook. It was this great mashup of Umbrella Academy, The X-Men, X-Files, um, and I'm hoping that this book delivers as well. I can't wait to get started on it. Well, there you have it. It's the IBW 2016 tag. I know Independent Bookseller Week is over this week, but if you haven't had a chance to do this tag, I highly recommend it. Why don't you give it a shot yourself? Um, it's still highly relevant. Maybe switch out Father's Day for something else. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic reading week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.